Okay, going on at 15.10, preparation for this evening's long play game tournament. It's the last game of the autumn season tournament. So it's game seven. So hoping to practice the evaluation that we've found out from the over the board games. And really the focal point is, it's not just about attack, attack. It's about improving the quality of the attack. And it's more a case of, if I get into a position where it is attackable, it's really making that appropriate decision to say, yes, go for the simple attack, rather than trying to be arty and fancy. So I've got to make that clear in my head. It's not about trying to blast the opponent out of the water with what looks like quick and dirty tactics. It's about just improving the quality of the calculation when it occurs, the attack position. Don't go arty. Simple as. Right, so we have potential for this. Not yet. Because we want to get the bishop out. So if we get the bishop support in this area, we put once with castle potential but we'll build up towards that not going to rush it because we need to sort our bed out first and things may change it's just an idea at this moment in time simple so hoping fingers crossed um, we just play a half decent game give the opponent a bit of a challenge could do it now but i want to go and castle let's castle don't rush it just take time if it's there it's there we've not sorted our bed out king's safe but we need to remember to give our king company as well all basic stuff but underneath all of those concepts are you know underneath that concept of giving my king the com um, company really it's about having that holistic strategic view of if my king is home alone then i'm going to suffer because they'll start squishing our king and that's the whole idea behind the answer the answer to chess so if i'm a betting man bishop's coming out oh it's not okay do we need to rush to get the bishop out at this moment we could bring it out because then that's setting the opening phase and we've done those exercises of knowing what phase you're at so the opening phase we've got everything open we're now touching on to the mid game now okay so we have the element now that we talked about which is coming here and attacking the queen in the mantra it says don't go and attack another piece if you've got a piece under attack unless of course it's to your benefit most of the moves are if it's to your benefit Okay, so we're attacking a higher piece with our knight. The knight can take, the bishop takes, and we still have this um, bishop under attack here. So we would lose out tempo-wise. So we could bring this bishop back and just bring it here to be attacking yet again the queen. I think that's what we'll do. So small little tempo movements like that and calculations, those to me, those are important things because back in the day I would have gone, right, yeah, I'm straight in. But then you lose that tempo because you've got a piece under attack. Sometimes it works where you can do it if you've got a piece under attack, depending on your position because it depends then where your pieces land. Are you giving them an extra benefit or not? So say like if the knight wasn't there and it couldn't take back, then we would we could freely come and do that. Because the queen then has to actually move, whereas it's got a piece that can actually take it off the board. So doing all these exercises, trying to reframe in my head, ready for the match tonight, um, so that I can kind of hopefully solidify the types of things that we're wanting to be working on and bring it into the game. It might make it a dry game, I don't care. Because it is a personal journey. 
we've got on the big thing here uh, are they blasting through or are they, are they moving the queen off of the line and attacking the b pawn okay so they took their time about that so the knight may be moving it's took itself away from the potential attack from the bishop as well really hasn't it could move the queen up but then he's going to take the pawn could move the rook across supporting I would normally just bring the rook across and support. So I'm looking to see if there's anything different. The knight's got nothing behind, so there's no point going and attacking. So I think a simple thing of protecting the B pawn should work out. Yeah, let's just do that. Don't want to overthink. So they, in my head, I'm thinking, well, they've lost a little bit of tempo because they've already moved this queen already. They've made space for the bishop, so it looks like they're potentially going to be coming here to attack the bishop. Uh, the bishop. And seeing as the rook is still there, I probably would just take with this pawn here, looking, as you know, to put pressure on this pawn here, if that happened. So I think that's what they're going to be doing. Is there anything that we can do to circumvent this at all in any way? No. We would normally just then push the small piece onto the queen. Just to give it something to think about. It's not got a 2 on 1, has he, on this pawn? No, I think we're just going to do this small, smaller piece attacking the queen. So it's obviously going to jump all the way back, which is okay. The knight could then go and attack the queen again. It's not landed on anything, has it? The queen. Queen then comes here. Then it's got like a little bit of a battery coming towards our king. So it's like a little bit of a setup, isn't it? And they obviously have this thought process maybe going here, going here and getting behind the bishop. So we don't have to attack the queen. We could look to give our king company. We could attack the knight. There's no 2 on one on this pawn if we go and attack the knight. If the knight does take, the bishop takes. It does have the pawns attacking. And the bishop's going to be attacked. We've just said we're happy with this, but does have his queen on the diagonal knight's protecting there at the minute I think we're just going to attack the knight I can't physically see anything wrong with that so we're going to attack the knight going back to the original attacking position right at the very start of the game and they do take very quickly so we're going to take with the bishop don't need to overthink that bit and as we said, probably pawns attacking. One of these is attacking the bishops either way. Oh, they're not doing just yet. Bishops protecting that area. So things have changed a little bit. We could look to push this pawn to get a fork here. I think we'll be too late to the party. We're going to hit and then he's going to hit with one of these. So this is going to happen. This queen's still going to have that diagonal towards our king. Let's just see how that plays out. We go up. This hits the bishop. Now we have the option of actually doing what others do to us, which would be either the knight taking the pawn, then the pawn takes, then the bishop takes. in front of his king and then the queen can come around somehow let's push the pawn and see which one of these comes down queen's protecting the pawn and knight's protecting this pawn at the minute or does he just drop the pawn options and choices I do but no not that one I do believe that's getting hit do we go for it? Pawn, bishop. I 
bishop's not going to attack because it gets taken. Hmm, I feel like I would just bang, just take it. But we will see how we feel when it happens. And they do drop the pawn. So they don't want us to block off and get a fork. So that's a horse of a different colour, but we still have still are in this situation here. So do we want to change the tables on this or what? If we capture, he's got like one, two, he's got three pieces there. So do we want to push onto this pawn? If he pushes past, then we have like a past pawn. If he takes, the queen can take, but he does have a white square bishop. So probably take with the white square bishop, angling through to the king. So I think we're going to push. It looks the better calculated move. It does take straight off. Bishop, I think the bishop's better, but it, it's not probably not going to stay there for long because I think the knight's going to jump. If the knight jumps, we take and it doubles the pawns. So the queen's going to move out of the way and maybe the knight comes here and attacks the bishop. Let's just um, keep it simple. And the knight's jumped straight there. Right, so we said probably looking for doubling the pawns in front of the king. He does have his white square bishops looking to probably put an x-ray through onto our queen. So we take, he takes, so there's a bit of space in front of the king. This pawn's got no protection so we move the queen up to attack the pawn. The king comes down to defend but at least we've taken ourselves off of the bishop's x-ray potential. So we take and have a look at it before we do anything else. Is there any magic with the knight? Nope. So I think we just attack the pawn. Take ourselves off of that pin because the bishop's chomping at the bit to get out. Because he wants to link, ring, uh, link up them rooks as well. King here defending, goes on to a white square. The bishop could actually, oh, he's going on to a dark square. Sorry, damn, like, you know. <laughs> As I said before, when we do our calculations, we try and make it to our benefit, don't we? So it's on a dark square, it's in the middle. Knight coming here, then the bishop is protecting, must be a way in. Slow potatoes, slow potatoes, rook owning the file, keeping that simple. Um, so he's protecting two pawns as well as the king. Don't want to negate a potential attack on the king if we've got something. Is it about pushing these pawns up? Yeah. His bishop's just coming here though and then defending. Nope, don't like that. Look, doubling up on the bishop. Oh, looks a little bit slow, doesn't it? Hmm. <laughs> I think because we're coming towards the end game, I'm going to open up a pawn. I'm going to open up the pawn around the King Gary. So I don't want to get back rank mated. Yeah, the white square bishop was always wanting to come out. We can't hit it. And the problem is if we go there, then he just comes behind it, doesn't he? Come on, there's got to be the magic. Night, 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 night. 
it's got to be a valid reason for this pawn move here okay and he's attacking the rook as well just bear that in mind let's go for a bit of ownership of the file then or attacking the bishop let's go for ownership of the file simple stuff Low potatoes. Still coming for this thing here. So you're going to try and get rid of the knight. Do we go for simple rook doubling? I think we go for simple rook doubling. White square bishop is going to go onto the knight. Bishop is protecting the knight. Let's do that. So if the swing here, come here. If they're going for that. It's attacking the queen. Is that something good? It's got the support of the queen. So they're doing a nice dance. Bishop's got no protection, but can't really get to that. You can come here. x ray through to the king. None of that. So we have to move the queen first before we think about hitting the bishop. <laughs> None of these squares are any good can drop back but that doesn't look proactive this one looks proactive if he does go there the knight can take mm, some fancy business going on with them bishops let's go here with the queen is it going to be worth it getting the double mm, might be might be This is one of those um, situations where the contradictory nature of chess kicks in. It's okay having the rooks doubled on the file, but if you've got like the bishops blocking the area, although they're a bit lower down the board. So we, well, if we got them off, we'd be able to do some sort of action towards the queen. If they forget themselves and we get here before they get there and they go oh let's go here we can take both of the rooks off oh uh, no they've got there in time let's just bring the rook here don't need to overthink that bit because i've looked at everything else it's just going to be a take fest if anything or are they going to keep it they can't keep the tension now they have to take Unless, of course, they bring the queen here to support or bring the bishop back, whichever. Yeah, so they've taken. Let's go here. They're taking their time over their moves, so we might be falling for something here. But at this moment, it's not too bad. They look more forward than us. We've got a nice bishop here. But they do have two menacing bishops that at the moment don't look like they're doing much i think the queen's going to come and support so he can go for a rook trade and his queen's on in the file and i don't have anything i can't attack in anywhere at this moment in time be a small little move here bishop's not going there because the pawn's there so it's a nice touch of having this here all right, is he going for um, a sacrifice of some sort? My queen needs to get into the game somehow. This bishop has got no protection on. We should be doing something. Anyway, let's hit the bishop like we said. Smaller piece attacking the bishop. Wants to bring his pawn back into line. The queen is defending, but we're also attacking as well. So we would get the pawn. But is that going to be any good? Because do they think they're being clever? Right, let's break this down. 
All right? So we take... Pawn takes... Rook takes... Yeah, I thought the rook was going to hide in there somehow. So I'm going to actually take the bishop. It looks like that move order works for us, unless, of course, they do something totally different. So we could go and look to see if we can get the queen off the board because we'll have a check on his king. So then the rook will be on their bishop type situation. So I'm going to take with the check on the king, also attacking the queen, and take the queen on the bishop. Bishop obviously is not going to sit there and let that happen. Oh, they're going for an exchange. There's no back rank because we talked about we were coming into the end game, making the space. So we can take the bishop and get another pawn off the board. But is he getting them back anyway? He is getting them back because he's going to come here. So it's just a massive take fest of pawns. Do we do it? Do we do it? I think we do it. Let's take. Take. We do have maybe a check on the king if he does come there. Let's go here. Comes up for the pawns. Take. He'll go for this. And we get to protect the pawn, our pawn as well. Because we'll be able to take this pawn and protect, it, protect our pawn here. But well, only issue we've got is if he starts ramping down here, got coming for this pawn. Can we come here? Or do we do this? If we do that, we're going to be losing a pawn. We're plus three at the minute. So if we push, doesn't have to take. He could come here, attacking this pawn. So if we take this pawn off the board. Then he takes. I think the push might work, you know. I think the push might work. In all these certain circumstances, it all depends on what the opponent does. So they do take, they take with that pawn. Okay, take here. So these pawns are linked. So now we can actually face this pawn off. Yeah. Don't need to rush it. Keep it simple. Face it off. <clears throat> Maybe it comes and defends or it attacks. So it's attacking. If he comes to attack this one, we can take his pawn and defend the pawn. It's not doing that. So is there some sort of arty business going on? I'm going to take the pawn and support. Now the king's going to come over, isn't it? Ouch. This is going to hurt. But he has to babysit these pawns, doesn't he now? So we can start maybe pushing these pawns up. Is this right? Push. Get the king up. Or do we get the king up first? King here. I don't know if it's going to work, you know. Small pawn push. Big pawn push. Hmm. Right. Let's get this right. Tuck the king. King decides maybe to go here. Bring the rook across. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better for now. Leave my poor king alone and just bring the rook here. So now we can potentially just start pushing the pawn up a bit. Oh, wrong. Ugh, arrow. I was. <laughs> this is why we're not messing about in the tournament at all. Dear me. Damn. I was meant to go, well, we could push this. 
let's just keep here if his king is in the open we'll get a queen he's got to try and hide his king somewhere get it round down right down the bottom out of the way because we'll be able to come over and put a check on like we're going to do now so if we, no we can't do that because he'll take <laughs> so if he had stayed there then we would have been able to get the queen Right, so I think it must be time to start moving the pawn up and the king. It's just going to keep putting checks on us. Okay, let's go. We're ready for it. Now he's defending the pawn. Okay, so do we just move out the side here? Then he puts a check on, we move up again. Yeah, okay, let's just do this. A little bit of a, oh, what's going on? So if we push, he comes down with a check. Then we have to go backwards. Push, comes down with a check. Got space to go up. Hmm. Come across attacking this pawn. Rook takes. Or if we just leave it and they go for the rook taking the pawn. Don't think they'll do that though. Let's move the king across. Let's go. Oh, I was hoping he was going to take and then we're just going to come here and just take his rook off the board. So if we attack the pawn, his rook comes down and puts a check on the king. Then the king has to move back and then the pawn can take. That's a bit ugly, isn't it? Well, seeing as he's done that, we may as well put a check on the king then. Five minutes, it's a 10 second increment. And then the actual match itself is 45 minutes and 15 seconds. So it's uh, a long play game. All right, so the baby's sitting in the palm. Bring the king down. Maybe look to do a dance of some sort here. And hit it this way. Not sure how that's going to work. Looks like it's doable. I might be making a big meal out of it. So it's come down for the palm. There is that element of him potentially getting the draw, but he's moved his rook from protecting this pawn. So we may as well take this pawn now. And just push the pawn up. Feels like it's potentially the better way of doing it, but you never know with the game of chess. This king looks so far away, it's not really going to get there in time. But if it stays on this fight, this um, rank, we won't be able to get the checky thing that we're wanting. Just keep pushing anyway. And push. And shall we push this one? Yep, try and get the king up, push onto the rook, tap the rook, rook's defended by the king, but then we could put a check on and then he loses his king, his rook. But then he gets our rook, 
So do we want that to actually happen? We've got two pawns. I think we should we can make that work, can't we? Yeah, we can make that work. Yeah, let's go here. Six minutes, ten seconds. It's um I think they might be resigning now. That was pretty nice. I'm hoping the tournament match goes something like that. So he's just gonna try and keep hiding in the corner. He's got space to move, so we'll just get a checkmate. Let's just push. I don't think it's a stalemate. Now we get a queen. Can't stop this one. And the signal's gone, so they have left the game. Resign button. I have to wait 33 seconds now. Unbelievable. So that's the key thing out of those last two um, over the board games is looking at appropriate targeting, appropriate calculation, as mentioned in the in the videos. And so it's not about turning into a raging attacking beast. It's uh, about utilizing what we're currently doing. We're getting those nice positions, but really not over-egging the pudding.